it's taken me a long time now to almost almost my whole life to to see clearly what I didn't see, what I've learned that I'm not alone. Like like Frida Kahlo, a half breed growing up, aware of two sides of a world, the Mexican in America, my mother's who I lived with and who was proud of who she was and where she came from, and my father's who I never lived with, the German American who grew up grew up beside Mexicans whose ability in Spanish made him the image of a boss. He told me what, what I'll call his American dichos. For example, never tell anyone you're Mexican, say you're Spanish. Thoughtful 60s socioeconomic parental advice. It's a strange thing for him to tell me. Later in life, I found out that he was probably mad and hurt because my mom kind of um, let him go, let's say. My mom often got all kinds of dumb assumptions thrust at her because she was that, la that hot Latin woman. That's, that was the phrase back then. When I was young, she was a, a divorcee and her seductive Latin power upset married men so much that I wasn't allowed to be friends with certain kids I'd meet at school or on, on teams, kids from good homes. And then there were many sillier things. Take cooking, for instance. Mexican women, all of them, were born cooking. Like in a Mexican restaurant, even. My mom was out most of the time, working in the daytime, and drinking and on dates at night. Never home cooking. And yet, if anyone came over and the conversation got going, she too felt obliged to commit to her genetic inheritance. She did, in fact, open cans well, those, those tops of salsa and green chile peeled right off. Then there's me, has that gone on a while, which I'm male, born a boy, which means, right, means. And I have been accused of it all because of this. And when I am guilty of any of it, which I would want to say is, one, human, and two, well, okay, I probably do watch more basketball than women. And also, yes, I am heterosexual. I'm guilty of all, and there it is, proven. Latin blood and macho jerk. This despite contrary facts about me. In law, they are called exculpatory. The complexity of each of us, not the simplicity of all men are or all women are, and so on with ridiculous mass generalizations. Like, despite being a howling macho, I studied religion in college, my major and grad degree in ideals, the heights, and not money, scores, and gains, not finance, fame, or power, mysticism even. If there were time here, I'd make an international list of hit mystics I read carefully, as in studied. I guess it's not enough to, to counterbalance my hormones. And thus, it is that when I tell people that I, that I am so guilty of being a brute culo that I force my wife to have two, bo two, to have two sons. To, uh, let me do things. So. I am so guilty of being a brute culo that I, that I force my wife to have two sons. Too many ponder instead of laugh. In the late 80s, I came to Austin, which for me was the South. A magazine editor took me to a nice restaurant, and wild me, I actually talked to a busboy who was Mexican, asked him where he was from, and they, all those sorts of things. The editor was shocked, but fascinated. He, had he never seen a person like this converse in a table he was at? Never noticed that these workers, these people, that never realized they talked in normal voices? Dark, unlike me, they used to be called indios in earlier centuries, indígenas now. The editor was like a Spaniard on a new journey to a land where he already lived. I was more than surprised that not only didn't so many people know there were Mexicans in their world, but that Mexicanos, Mexicanos had human lives just like theirs. 
The world of my father's side often sees everything I've done as emanating from below my, from below my belt, not above my shoulders. I can't tell you how many times I've been told I was smart, as remarkable a surprise for those who discovered this in me as to a New York literary agent that I can speak English, that I can speak English okay most of the time. <laughs> I'm not telling you I am so smart, only that I'm not really only Latino juices. Nobody ever thought writer Norman Mailer who was an intentional macho jerk, wasn't smart. But I guess because he was New York and Jewish, his maleness was an intellectual stance, how he thought of it too, not something his people are born with. A few years ago, I was interviewed by a Texas monthly journalist because I had a new book. When the piece came out in the New York Times as a profile, the writer claimed I described myself as, quote, Brawny and strong, unquote. That is, I supposedly chose those two words. I told him that. Brawny, the paper towel dude. The lumberjack. Sure, I certainly could have chosen two adjectives to contrast. Contrast, as opposed to meaning the same thing, the usual purpose of and between two words. Dumb enough, I guess, it took me three weeks to finally figure out that what I'd actually said. That not brawny, but brainy and strong. That is, I was once a high-rise construction worker who was also brainy, as in, I, I have a master's degree, and now I am a writer who, before I became physically messed up as I am now, from that other world, how could this journalist hear me say brainy when I live off juices that rage way, way beneath my Chicano head? Let me get a drink. Sorry. That other world has, has its views of us in their history. Of course, I could go on at length on this topic of, according to their firm beliefs of faith, how little Mexico and how little Mexican culture is in this world, not only in this huge southwestern quadrant of the United States, but in the entire country. Let's take, for instance, let's, let's, let's think, for instance, of the state of the Union most American. It's true back home. Where is that? It, the one that reflects the most nostalgic image of, of, a, of its lush bounty. In the state where the presidential candidates must go to begin the election cycle. And what is Iowa famous for? What is that crop that is the most fresh, healthy icon of American virtue and wholesomeness? Corn. Yellow as a sun on a spring day. It is in the cornfields where Kevin Costner builds his field of dreams. Oh, so American roots romantic. Bueno, sorry, you may be a little surprised, but corn is the most indigenous, ancient product of Mexico. Central Mexico, exactly. The first seeds there, and by sacred cultivation and meticulous cross-pollination, pollination for several centuries, where corn was God, was worshipped as a God, where working the milpas was what people did, and corn as tortilla was what all its people were made of. Another, I learned that Chile isn't Mexican, it's Texan, American. It says this in a major in a major history of cu cuisine book that I read, though it is true that it seems to be like a similar dish found especially in northern Mexico. Around this part of where we are right now, what was once known as northern Mexico, that dish would be called frijoles. In restaurants called Mexican these days, they're charro or borracho beans. It's true that the other side added ketchup and Worcestershire and whatever in theirs, and a lot more meat because they're richer, right? 
And they can even take, take the beans out, but not the chiles. Those are, excuse me, from Mexican culture. And it is true that the E was lopped off chile, so it's, it's like they say, chili. That's what made it, it made it American all the way, nothing to do with Mexican culture. What I used, when I used to coach here in El Paso, nine years, I did that. The, the kids would eat popcorn and potato chips and all sort of unhealthy crap. What did they soak all that in? Louisiana. And maybe in Louisiana and much of the U.S. and even here in El Paso and among our children and a few parents of them, they might believe that a chile sauce, which you see everywhere in Mexico, originated in Louisiana. Or there's Tabasco sauce. How do you suppose certain very conservative types would react as they splash it onto their huge steaks to learn that Tabasco isn't some strange word for spicy all-American hot sauce? That it is a state in Mexico, maybe named after the very river that Cortez first traveled when he went into its interior, where in where and when he was given Malinche as a gift, and is often associated with the indigenous people who were living there at the time. In other words, aside from the name and the chiles and the history of Mexican sauces all over Mexico, and even in the state of Tabasco, where, incidentally, many ships from the port of New Orleans docked to import goods, to import goods from Mexico, Tabasco sauce was invented and made in Louisiana and is American. <clears throat> there may be, let's, let's call them nefarious reasons for all this ignorance. I like dividing the word into two. But I want to think large, good and deep. Big because this has gone on for so long, like more than one century, two even and especially after that Mexican-American war was lost, after James K. Polk, pro-slavery Southern, Southern president, decided to get the Southwest by any means necessary. Let's skip all that, though. See us as large and wiser and exotic, even. So exotic that we're like Chinese sages, every Mexicano and Chicanito who has ever been here. One of the greatest philosophers of China, Lao Tzu, wrote one of the most influential books of human history called the Tao Te Ching. There is so much in there, but I quote one line I have always carried with me. The perfect sage leaves no tracks. Now, what does that mean? The essence of what can be called Taoism, we can easily spend hours on this but I won't do that. What is the perfect government? Not the one that is messing up because everyone sees that and complains. No, is the one proceeding so smoothly that pe people forget it is there. It leaves, in other words, no tracks, no footprints. It is the way with so many people we count on and don't. The perfect gardener leaves the yard looking as though it were nature itself. The perfect thief goes in and out and no one knows the place was violated. The perfect carpenter is he whose doors open and close so seamlessly, whose cuts are so taken for granted that never occurs to anyone to remark on the fine skilled work done. And thus, say I, are we, so much given and taken, so perfect, it is simply that there are no footprints to be seen. Thank you so much for having me here.